Hello everyone, welcome back to Game of Night, and today we start our Godot 2D platformer series, which will be for beginners and people switching over from other game engines. So, let's get right into it. First time you open Godot, it'll look like this. Right, let's change the 2D, make it a little bit more simple. And now over here you select a root node for whatever you're making. If you're making a main menu, probably use interface, 3D game, 3D scene, 2D scene, whatever. Hit it, rename it, just click on it, click on that again, and let's just call this level 1. You can also just right click and click rename. Cool. And now let's make a little platform. Over here I have some sprite sheets, some sprite stuff, and uh, these will be in Discord. The actual normal sprite sheet, this is made by someone on itch.io. It's called Treasure Hunters. I'll put the link in the description and the Discord's link in the description if you just want to download the file from over there. And at the end of the series, I'll upload this file right here sprites for tutorial just so everyone has the sprites that I use exactly. As you can see here, episode one, I just have a player's animations, well, sprites, and a terrain sprite right there. So let's make a little platform, shall we? What we need is a static body 2D, because it's that stall, obviously, it's a platform, it doesn't move. And now we need something, right? Let's read the error. This node has no shape, so it can't collide or interact with other objects. Cool, so we need a shape. Collision shape 2D, beautiful. And this needs a shape as well, right over here, and let's make it a rectangle, cool. So now we have a little blue box to show where the collision shape is, make it as big as we want, and yeah. So let's now make another node on it, and let's make it Sprite 2D. And we can either just use the Godot icon like this, or we can use our own stuff like so. Cool. And now, Let's fix this because as you can see, we can't see our collision shape anymore because it's behind this object. So let's take the sprite 2D, put it behind, and now we can actually see the collision shape. Let's click on it and let's drag these out so they match up. Like so. Cool. And then I have something to show you, which is if we take this sprite and we drag it out, it'll be very blurry, right? This is not right for pixel art. You want to be able to drag it out and it looks crisp, clean. Right, so go into your project, project settings, and scroll down so you see rendering, click on textures, change it from linear to nearest. Right, it's not in the import settings in case you get confused, it's in your project settings. Cool. Now if you drag this out, crisp, beautiful. And now let's rename this to platform. And let's hit control S, and this will save this level one scene. So let's make a new folder, call it scenes, World Scenes, Level 1, Save, beautiful. Right now we can close this, go to Scenes, and double click it to open it back up. Let's take this platform, let's move it. The first thing we'll we want to probably do is rescale this to the appropriate size, right? Because if you see, if we hit play, this platform's a little bit small, right? If we have like a bunch of these platforms, they'll still be small. So let's, we have to rescale the resolution to the appropriate size, right? Let's do that. So you wanna go into here, and now we're gonna change the resolution probably to something that still scales of 16 by nine. So that would be 860 by 540, I think is the right resolution. Ah, see, almost made a mistake. It's 960 by 540. So this is a little bit more of a smaller screen, but it's still 16 by 9, so on a 1080p screen it'll still work. And now let's take this platform right here and let's move it over here. Right, so you can see that fits a bit better into the camera box, which is this box over here. So that's a big screen. Is. Let's hit play and see how this looks. I'd say that's a little bit more appropriate. We could zoom it in even more, but let's hit full screen and see an issue. Ah, it's at the left. So let's change how the screen scales. Right, so mode, we're going to change the viewport. Now if you hit play, full screen, you can see it's a little bit better. I think this resolution is fine. We could make it a little bit more smaller if you think this is a little bit too zoomed out, but for now we'll keep it like this, might change it in the future. Let's take this platform, let's make a few. Control D, move it. Control D, move it. Control D, move it. Right, there we go. Little platform, jump. To the other platform. Let's bring another one, why not, and put it like over there. Cool. There's a little platformer game so far. Close all of these. Right. And now we're going to make a player. So let's go level one, add child node, and now we need a character body 2D because this one will be able to move around. Right click, add node, collision shape again, 
it needs a shape. And let's select the shape. And I'm gonna hit a I'm gonna hit a capsule shape, right? I'm gonna make my play a little bit round. I think round is a little bit better. It feels smoother for a platformer, right? And let's add child node and let's add sprite 2D again. And let's drag in our play sprite right there. Cool. As you can see, our collision shape's almost already perfectly on it. So let's change that up a little bit. That needs to go up like that. And then let's move it up a little bit like so. Yep, maybe make it a smidget wider and one smidget bigger. I think that'll be good. I think that'll feel good, right? But we'll test it. We could change it anytime we want. Might be a little bit too wide, actually. I think that's good. Leaving some leniency for the player is always recommended. Don't make the player feel like the game is not in his favor, right? So if he hits a wall with his hand over here, it shouldn't, you know, it shouldn't mess up. It should be perfect. And now let's animate this player, right? We're going to move him. We're not going to move him yet, actually, sorry. We're going to add a animation player right there. Right now you have this animation tab open. Let's make a new animation. So hit animation, hit new, and let's say idle. You can make that all caps if you want. You can name it whatever. Naming doesn't really matter. But yeah. Cool. And now let's change this from one whole second to half a second. Because we're working on pixel art sprites, it's not meant to be fast. And let's add track, property track. Scroll down, there's your character body 2D. Select sprite 2D, and then select texture. Right? So frame one. I'm going to add a key, and by default, a little bit of the default key I've selected, but just select your sprite, drag it in, and then just, again, add key, the second sprite, add key, and you get the gist. Very simple, just keep doing that until you have all your sprites done. Cool. You can animate an entire sprite sheet if you want, instead of dragging in sprites individually, but we'll get into that another time. So now if we hit play, Cool, little animation, hit the little loop button over there. And now, there we go. What a beautiful little guy, right? And now let's just pause it because we don't want to see that constantly. Let's just move that back. Let's hit output and let's deselect the animation player and select the character body and yeah. So if you hit play, nothing's going to happen. He's not going to play the animation by default. You see him up there, you can barely see him, but you know that's not playing. You'll see some movement if it was playing. So let's rename the player. Let's rename him to player and let's give him a script click that little button right there or click on the player and click attach script and now we need to make a scripts folder set that hit this little up button to go all the way back out to your main folder and let's make a new folder called scripts let's make a folder called player and save the player script and you can see oh there's all this stuff right and that's because we use the template of a character body 2d so if you hit and go into scripts player and we hit new script you can see template little tick box no default if it was one if it was a character body 2d it'd have all this stuff right here so Godot has these stuff nicely built in for you so you don't have to do it yourself and now you can see on our player there's one little issue we can't really change these values in our editor it'd be really annoying to have to go into here every single time so let's change that let's change concert to export var and export var Beautiful, and let's change these to lowercase because I don't like having these big uppercase words. I think they're very frustrating to look at, but of course, name it whatever you want. Jump height, and let's control C and just replace these little uppercase ones like so. Gorgeous, right? And now in here, we have these variables. So let's see what happens. Let's, let's take our player, and first we're gonna save him as his own scene. Right click the player and click save branch as scene. And you can see we have world scenes, new folder, entities, right? I think that'll be good. So this is just a folder we're going to save entities into and save the player into that. And now you can see, oh, a lot of stuff is gone. That's because we're meant to edit the player in here. This is where you edit your stuff. Do not edit them in here. You can if you want, but generally you should edit them in here, right? In their actual scene. So let's move the player to this platform right over here. And let's just hit Control S and let's hit play and see what happens. Let's see what happens. Oh, he fell on the ground. Hit space bar and he'll jump. The movement keys don't work yet, except uh, arrow keys do. You can see he's, he's a little bit fast. Eh, fell off the map. Right, so let's adjust the speed. So we're going to the player 
right? And we're going to adjust the jump height. So let's make it minus 300. And let's make the speed 200, right? Because he's just moving a little bit too far. He's jumping a little bit higher. We're going to hit Control S, go back into level one. And now you can see the values here are updated, right? Let's hit play and let's, let's test that out. So we can use arrow keys for movement and space bar to jump. Yeah, I think there's a little bit better. It's not perfect, but it's a little bit better, right? We'll adjust things in the future. Cool. So let's change how these input, how this input works. So go into your project, project settings, go into input map, and here you can add some input. Let's do left, add, right, add, down, up, and jump. Cool. And I'll click this little plus button to add things. So for left, we're going to do A, obviously, because A is left. Right is D. Down is S. Up is W. And jump is space. Right? You just tap space bar. Hit close. And now let's change these things. So instead of this, we're going to do space. Oh, sorry. Jump. Cool. There you see it pop up. And instead of UI left, we just do left and right. Cool. And you can see this little and is on floor. That's a built-in function of a character body to check if something is on the floor. So you can't just spam jump in the sky. So let's test this WASD movement. It should feel a little bit better. Yeah, that feels great. Now I can just play with one hand. Cool. Nice. So... Let's get into how we can actually animate this player, make his animations play, right? So we're gonna head into script and we're gonna get a reference to this animation player. So let's get a reference to our animation player, right? To do this, we're gonna go up here <clears throat> and we're gonna make, either we can do an export var and drag in the animation player like so. So I'll show you, we can do export var, um, animation player, and it is a animation player. Right? Cool. Now you can see we can drag it in over here. We don't want to do that though. That's a little bit finicky. So let's change this to on ready instead. So that'll be loaded up much faster. And this is equal to this right here. You can just drag it in like so. Cool. Beautiful. Right? And now we can reference this animation player. We could just call this animation instead because we don't want to type an animation player every time. So if direction, so if direction is whatever, then it'll play an animation. We'll change that to run in future. We'll make an animation called run. But for now, let's just have an animation that is an else statement. So if direction is nothing, so if you're not moving around, then animation should just be animation play. There we go, pops up. So let's hit play and see if that works. Oh, wait, we're in a player scene. <laughs> so let's get into our level one scene and let's fix this up, shall we? We're gonna hit play and we're gonna say select current. So this will make the default play scene that scene right there. And oh, as you can see, our player has a little idle animation play. Cool. There we go, guys. We got movement and we got animation. Let's make the player flip left and right because at the moment it's not, you know, the best. To make the player flip on his axes, we're gonna do something a little bit different than people would normally do, and we're gonna only flip the sprite's axes instead. Because we don't want the player to flip, we only want the sprite to flip, right? Because that's just visually what is right. So let's make a new export variable, and let's put a little space here. So valuables, I mean, var eh, variables have a little bit more space, like things of values than stuff that are just referencing. So let's make an on ready var again, and let's go, Call this one sprite equals, and we just drag in our sprite to the right there. Beautiful. Right, and now we can go into here, and we can go if, sorry, the brackets dot is action just pressed, right? And we're gonna do right, no, sorry, we're gonna do left first. Left, then we're gonna do sprite dot scale dot x equals, and this one is a little tricky. We're gonna do ABS sprite. Ah, oh, sorry about that. That's my little play button. Dot scale. Dot x. Um, and then I think that's just right. And then times negative one. 
and 100% of that is right. Uh, and then we're just going to do this. We're going to copy it, right? And we're going to paste it right there, back, back. And we're just going to move that right there. And then make this right. Oops, that doesn't work. It actually delete it and then click right. I think this is good. Let's hit play and see what happens. Cool, yeah. That's right. Gorgeous. Let me get rid of that right there. So there we go. Let's get rid of these comments as well. You can keep them as if you want, but I'm going to delete them. If you want to keep them, keep them. If you don't want to keep them, don't keep them. There's no need to. Let's get rid of all these comments just so it's a little easy to understand. And yeah, so there we go. Beautiful. You just made your first movement controller in 2D. So we have a little platformer, move around, and next episode we'll do the animations. And yeah, we'll just do the animations and make a little state machine to see what state we're in. So jumping, falling, attacking, all that good stuff. So I think the game feels good right now with 200 speed and 300 jump height. I think that feels pretty nice, pretty clean movement, feels nice moving around. And as you can see, oh, we slide off of platforms pretty nicely because we do have a circular shape instead of... Yeah, so we, we fall off instead of a square shape. And let's go into our project and let's change the general window. Instead of windowed mode, we're going to put on maximized, right? So if we hit play, it's maximized. We don't have to worry about that. So there we go, guys. Hope you guys enjoyed. This will be a few part series. And yeah, we'll make a nice little platformer. Very simple. And we'll do some cool stuff. I'll catch you guys in the next video and have a nice day. Remember to join the Discord in the description and the itch for the sprite sheets is in the description as well. Bye-bye.